Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is message 540. The name of our devotional today is Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. But first let us pray. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 reads, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. I have read that Bible verse, my Lord, many times before. But today, that Bible verse takes on new meaning, my Father. Today, that Bible verse, my God, means so much more to me, Father God. As I have matured and grown in you, my God, I understand what really that truly means. When we trust in you, we trust your word, we trust your way of doing things, my Father. We trust your word. And we are not picking and choosing what is convenient to us to believe or to do or to emulate, but we are trusting in you with all of our heart and we are not leaning on our own understanding our own understanding of whether a person is difficult or rude whether a person deserves this or that because then we are leaning on our own understanding and we are basically applying our own justice, my Father. And that is not the understanding that I want to lean on. I want to lean on your understanding, Lord, that says that no matter what, do not be confrontational, do not show anything other than the love of Christ, the mercy of Christ, and the compassion of Christ, even if they're stepping on your toes. I think that we can get to the point where we say, excuse me, and we walk away without getting offended, without lashing out, without insulting anyone, or without really going by our flesh or by our understanding my father my lord god may we have the mercy and the grace to treat others as you treat us father god my lord my god in all of our ways we are going to acknowledge you in all of our ways so you may direct our path, my Father, because it says it, it's a promise that when we trust in you with all of our heart and we do not lean on our own understanding of what judgment should be like or what justice should be like or what condemnation or punishment a person deserves because either they're rude or because they weren't nice to you or because they didn't treat you like you think that you deserve and you are applying your own justice my lord we don't want to do that we want to follow your understanding and not lean on our own. Our own is faulty, God. It is faulty, God. Our own understanding will not get us into heaven. Our own understanding will just be, my Father, part of the problem and not part of the solution. The solution is trusting the Lord with all of your heart and doing what the Bible says and being kind to other people and being gracious and compassionate and forgiving and, and loving and merciful, that is being part of the solution. 
because the Bible says very clearly that we should fight evil with good. Why are we going to apply our own justice? Whether someone deserves something from us or not, the only one that is capable of doing that is the Lord Jesus. And so I want to talk to you about that today because that is very important. Just like the other day I spoke about humans being sacred. They are sacred. They are created by God. And therefore, we have no right to apply or to implement our justice because of revenge, because we didn't get the treatment that we think that we deserve. That is not leaning on God. That is not trusting in God. That is not going the way of God. That is going our way. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. My father, thank you so much, my Lord, because truly you are the God of our salvation. We give you praise, honor, and glory, God. Thank you, Father God, for being my God, that shield, that helper, my Father, the one that directs our step, God, the one that helps us and heals our heart, Lord. Thank you, my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory today and every day. Amen. When it comes to the process of learning to walk in love, not fear, we must allow the Spirit to help us trust God's magnificent character of love. We must consciously accept His incre incredible love for us, regardless of how others may have betrayed or wounded us. As we do, He will lead us through the practical day-by-day -day choices that build in us the habit of instinctive love. We will never let him transform us in this way. However, if we do not believe profoundly that our Father loves us and has our best interest at heart, if we don't believe that God is good, if we don't believe really to the core of our being that he loves us, and that everything that he does is good and what he says is good and what he teaches in his word is good, then we can never really have that instinctive reaction of love that he wants us to have. If we only believe in his power and his promises, but we don't believe that there is love behind them, we will fall back constantly into our old reasoning or evaluations. We cannot give only intellectual assent to this great love of God. We must allow its reality to saturate our entire being. He is madly in love with us and will not let us go. If past wounds hinder, then we must ask for and receive healing for them so that we can then walk in the love that God requires of us. And that is why inner healing is so important. Because until we heal our wounds, we can't really love freely, unconditionally, and without restraint. How will we recognize His Spirit at work in us in a myriad of ways in our daily lives, we will choose to be unselfish when we could be selfish. We will choose to be unselfish when we could be selfish. That is the instinctive power of love. When we have Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit inside of us, we choose, we will choose not to fear the outcome of our circumstances, even when we cannot understand them. We will dare to forgive when the natural mind says, why should I forgive? 
let them forgive forgive or let them do it i don't have to forgive anything in my own life this process continues to be an adventure when it looks as though I might not get to the airport on time because of a traffic jam, I can walk in faith, birthed in love, not fear, and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Whatever you took out of the way for me, whatever you put in the way for me to be able to be safe and to be able to be secure, Father, thank you. And when someone makes a mistake, that seemingly affects my well-being, I can trust that God is in it and refuse to become offended, to lash out, to become rude. I can hear the voice of my father deep down in my spirit saying, walk in love this time, not in fear. Do you know that we are constantly being tested, that our faith is constantly going to school? Our faith is constantly in school. Because remember, we are being made, we are being formed and shaped to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. So every day, we are in school. And every day, we will encounter opportunities for our faith to grow, for us to do what God says to do in His Word, for us to lean on God and his ways of doing things rather than leaning on our ways. We are constantly going to school. What grade is your faith in? What grade is your Christian walk in? Are you a baby Christian or are you a mature Christian? Are you a fleshly Christian or are you a spirit-led Christian? What level are you in? What grade are you in? Do you still get offended when people make a mistake? Do you get mad when people make a mistake? When do you get ashamed of someone else's mistake? And this happens to a lot of people. There are people that are so perfectionist, that's the way that they were raised, that when someone makes a mistake in their team at work, they feel ashamed and they will not talk to that person. Because their mistake supposedly is reflecting on a personal level on that person. There are so many different things that the heart has to heal from. There are so many different conditions of the heart. And if we walk in love, and if we do what God says, we are going to be okay. And we are always, for the most part, going to give a good testimony about Jesus Christ to others. When we obey, what God says to do, when we lean on God and his ways, we are truly delighting the heart of God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord God, for this message. Thank you, my Father. How you, my God, you burn my heart with such messages and revelations as I live my life as I go day to day on my journey through life, my Father, I look at things and I analyze things and I learn from situations, God. And I say, how could I do this different? Lord, help us each day to be more like you and not let it be a cliche, Father, but to be a reality. My Lord, we love you, we thank you, we bless you in Jesus' name. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, and dance in the rain. Remember, you have so many, many reasons why you should be grateful. God loves you so very much. Until we meet again, have a blessed day.
This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.